welcome to this video and thank you so much for subscribing to my channel i'm going to be making more tutorials for you and today it's a little bit special because we're going to be using x particles as well so if you have the plugin and you kind of struggle to connect it with redshift then this tutorial is for you i have seen amazing tutorial from ryan mccalley on linkedin and this really helped me to understand how x particles communicate with redshift using data nodes so today we're going to use integer data node and i'm going to show you everything so let's do this So let's do this. Before particles, we built our scene. So we're going to add text and I'll write uh, XOX and I'm just going to make sure our letters are connecting. Maybe change the font to something like uh, something bold, like Montserrat Black and make sure it's like 43, just so it intersecting a little, right? So that should be fine, maybe a little bit less, yeah, just like that. So now this is our logo. I'm just gonna lift it a little bit up and add our background. So I have some kind of kind of look to it. So I'm just gonna studio look. So yeah, if you wanna learn how to make these backgrounds, I have a tutorial for that too. And now we're gonna convert this text to single object mesh. So we're just gonna use connect object for that. So we can go to subdivision surface menu. We're gonna find connect here and we take that text and put it inside the connect. And we just gonna unweld and press C. And this will convert it into single object. So we change it to logo. We change the name to logo XOX. We can also add a dome light quickly. And right, so we have a dome light. So this is the beginning. And now we can add X particles. So we go to Insidium X particles XP system. And that will create emitter for us. And if it doesn't, you can go to emitters, create emitter. So with XP emitter in place, I can see it here. So I can just drag it over and, and I can shift, I mean, I can move it inside of our mesh so it disappears. Maybe it's behind now. It's already behind. So uh, for us to better see that, we can go to our logo. We go to basic tab and check the X-ray. And now I can see through and I can see what's happening. So I, I see it inside and I'm gonna just change a couple things on that emitter. So go to XP emitter and go to object and change the emitter shape to circle. Now we can adjust this to be just in the exact middle. And now the cone angle should be 90 because if you look at it, I'm going to play now. I'm just going to turn off the IPR. I'm just going to play. It's a, uh, it's emitting on the Z axis, but we want, we want to be emitting uh, inside our mesh. So kind of outwards, right? So now it's emitting outwards and we just want to emit not from the whole uh, circle, but from the ring only, just so that it stays hollow, our O. And now we need our first modifier. Just going to press shift plus C that will bring up the console and we write XP follow surface. And we just drag our logo inside XP follow surface object top. And now you can see the particles following our mesh, which is exactly what we want. What we could do better is I don't like these line streaks of, um, you know, it's, it's a uniform and we are just going to introduce some craziness by, uh, pressing shift C again and bringing XP turbulence. So I'm going to bring in turbulence and again, I, I take it down to modifier folder just for the housekeeping and we are going to change things like noise type to baby turbulence and maybe scale to like 150 actually. Yeah. In our emitter, we can reduce the speed on to like 60 just so it's not so fast. And now it's behaving a little 
little like we want, right? So uh, make sure you have 240 frames just so um, all the particles can reach the whole object. Um, so if you have like 90 frames here, you just go here and change the change the amount of frames for your timeline. And now this is done and we can um, really just bring our hero of the scene and that will be shift plus C XP Infectio. Infectio, we can create multiple of those objects. I can literally drag this and, you know, create two, but we're not going to do that. I'm just going to go uh, back one step and we're going to animate our seed object. So we're going to go into our Infectio, click on a seed object, go to coordination tab and create keyframe on the beginning. So make sure you have 240 keyframes, right? And we create keyframe here in the beginning uh, on the position X, right? So it's somewhere, make sure it's on one side of the, of our logo. You put the keyframe in by just pressing this little diamond shape. And then we move it to about 160. We drag this over here and now we confirm that. Now it's moving. Now we're gonna let it play and we'll see how the sickness is spreading. Okay, okay. Maybe I'll, I'll just make it smaller because I, I feel like it's affecting a lot in the very, sta very early stages. So I'm just gonna let it go just like subtle bottom, yes. So this is done and now we can start really, uh, you know, turning on our IPR uh, we can maybe press this, uh, we can disable the logo in our IPR by double clicking this dot and now it's not going to be visible. The next thing we need to do we, on our XP emitter, we need to add redshift object tag. So this way we tell redshift, hey, you know, these is particles, can you display them as the optimized spheres? It will do that. So if I, if I just play now, you see it's already seeing, that's great. I'm just going to turn off the IPR for a while, let it run. And now I can press play again. And you see we have three states of one particle. So one of them is initial state, the, the light blue. The one of the, well, the other one is the, the one when it's been incubated, being transformed into the red ones. So incubated are the dark blue and then the red ones are the infected one. So this is very interesting and we can, we can really uh, drive amazing effects just, um, you know, if, if we could uh, change those shaders. So this is what we're going to look at today. But how do we, you know, apply material? So the, the way we do it, we go to XP Infectio and we say into object tab, uh, let's don't use color mode fixed value like those uh, blue one and red one. Let's use groups for that. So you will create a group for incubating. So I, it immediately created group here. I will call it incubating, drag it into our group folder. I'm going to go back to Infectio and create another group. And that will be called infected. So, and drag it over here. Incubating and infected group are going to be our drivers for our material because we're going to be driving, we, we're going to be driving the group IDs. So you see those groups have a, uh, group numbers. So group incubating, like it's a group number one, group infected. And we can also create one more group for our initial state. We call it one. So that's the first state, we call it in it. Then it's going to be incubating. That's the second. So we can rename it to second. I mean the, the number two and the number three, it's going to be our infected. So there's a three stages. So all we need to do, we need to add material. Uh, so we're going to add redshift material to our emitter. And now it will change to gray. But then we double click that, edit shader graph, and we we can change this created material to something like blue. That's going to be our initial material. So like a, a light blue. And now we're going to add two more materials for our in cube and another material for our infected. Now let's change this color infected. Those were the red ones 
and incubated those were the dark blue ones we can remove this wire and we can add in shader switch so we bring in shader switch and we also need the data node to drive the group data and that will be integer user data so integer user data goes into the selector right and now we just plugged in the first initial material as a default shader and now we bringing the incubated as a shader zero and then infected as a shader one and shader switch can get plugged to the output surface now and now we just need to tell it uh, in the integer user data we go to drop down here like little arrow particles and selected by group id so based on group id it will start but then we need to offset it a little i found a problem with the uh, with the shader switch that you know it, it's kind of random at times so if you offset it by two uh, because of i think shader zero can't match shader group zero so you offset it by two or by one depending on your setup and this should match now and as you can see we have the material in it which could be purple now right and we can really start playing with it we can separate these right move this kind of a, on a side and we can really start playing with the, with the look of the whole thing we can say this is our initial group this is going to be our infected and we can for example make this uh, light blue which will go into you know overall emission which is going to go into darker blue but it's going to be luminescent and then we can say the infected will become actually purple and they're going to be luminescent even more and, and we can really start driving um, crazy animations with this. So if I'm gonna just reduce that dome light, uh, you can see that we get in some interesting result. I'm just gonna add one area light just for fun, just somewhere in the background. Yep, just like that. Just make it smaller. Yes, so something like that. Immediately interesting animation. And, and the sickness is spreading, right? I'm just gonna speed it up a little and immediately you get the luminescent particles and you can see, you can let your imagination run wild because with one one shader, you, you control three states of a particle, which is super cool. You can make this gold, you can make this silver and this is gonna be platinum, you know, make them smaller so you can go into the um, scale multiplier I didn't mean to bring this. You can go to scale multiplier in a particles um, redshift object and you can go 0 0.2. You can make them smaller and just go to emitter and make it that is maybe 20,000 particles and just run it again. And that, that makes for much more interesting simulation. So I'm just going to turn off the IPR, kind of speed it up again. That's really good. So now it's all about you playing with the with the settings and just get the dynamics that you really enjoy and then you cache the animation and play with the look even more. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching and have a good one and please give it a like if you like these tutorials so I know what to make next and see you. Out.